In this video, I'll be showing you how to play songs by ear. Playing songs by ear just means playing any song without sheet music or guitar tabs. No previous background in music is really needed to understand, and even though I have a piano here, it's just an example so you can easily see which notes are going up and down. This can help anyone who plays a musical instrument or any vocalist who wants to hit notes spot on. First, you need to understand the main concept behind playing songs by ear, and as always, it's best to work with a very simple example. Let's use the first four notes of the song, Silent Night. Let's try to understand the song. The song is made up of four different notes with different distances in between. We start at the first note. We move up two notes, and yes, the black notes count. Then we move down two notes. Then finally, we move down three notes. I can play these distances anywhere on the piano, and it will sound like the same song. If we change the distances just a little bit, it will sound like a different song. So now we can say that the distances between notes is what lets your brain recognize this song as Silent Night. So now we finally get to the point. If I wanted to play this song or any other song by ear, I would have to try and identify the distances between the notes. That's the basic concept behind playing a song by ear. It's very possible to learn, and if you're motivated enough, you can learn it pretty quickly. So now the question becomes, what's the best way to identify the distances between the notes? And aren't there too many possible distances to memorize? Okay, well let me answer the first question. How is it possible to identify the distances between notes? Well, let me give you an example. The best way to identify the distances between two notes is to simply associate a song to it. For this particular interval, I've associated the song Green Sleeves. As long as the second note is three notes above the first note, it will always sound like Green Sleeves. you associate the song to it, the more you automatically start thinking of that song whenever you hear that interval. For every note distance or interval, there's always a song you can associate. For example, listen to this weird sounding one. Now I want you to try and think of a song that has this interval in it. You may think it'd have to be some kind of weird song or a scary movie song, but actually, Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. That song is actually from the first Willy Wonka movie. Now, the interval sounds incredibly pleasant despite most people's first reaction. Don't worry about the song associations. I'll help you a lot with that, I promise. So the last question we have to cover is just, how many intervals do I have to memorize? The simple answer to that question is just 12. If you memorize just 12 intervals, you'll be able to play simple melodies by ear. Why just 12? Well, let me show you an example. Okay, it's the same interval I just played earlier, but now let's try it an octave above. The interval sounds almost exactly the same because we're still moving from a D to a C sharp, even if the C sharp is an octave up. Let's play it at the same time. It sounds the same. It has the same quality to it. Just one note is an octave up. So there's just 12. If you master just 12, you can get any song by ear, and that's all there is to it. I've actually spent a lot of time making a free and easy to use software that lets you identify these intervals and associate them to a song very, very easy. And best of all, it's browser based, meaning you don't have to download anything. But before we continue, you have to understand that playing songs by ear is a concept that's part of music theory. And music theory is standardized, and anytime anything is standardized, I like to add tons of random vocabulary to make things more complicated than they really are. For example, instead of saying, how many cats are in this picture? Once things become standardized, they say, what is the aggregate sum of Felis Catus within the boundaries of this rectangle? And instead of saying it that way, they just make up stupid symbols to represent the already complicated way they were saying it before to further confuse the poor students and abstract the question even further. 
Okay, so music theory is standardized, meaning it's going to have its own vocabulary. Instead of saying like we were before, the second note is one note above the first note, they would say it's a minor second. If the distance is two notes, then they would say it's a major second. If it was three notes, they say it's a minor third. So they have their own list of associated values for each of the 12 intervals. Now I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by this or feel you have to memorize this. You don't, so don't worry about it. Just know it exists so if you ever want to study higher level concepts in music, you won't have a difficult time.